Okay, so do the things I told you to do, but quietly, because I need you to listen at the same time. So two things you should have picked up on your way in. One of them is the paper that you will take notes on during this Kahoot game. All right, this will be where it's class point. I will be checking as we go. And of course, before the end of class to make sure that you're doing what you're told, that you're taking notes on this paper. I do not necessarily need you to write down the whole question word for word, just summarize it. If the question is telling you to make a histogram of all these dogs that are owned by people, I don't know, just put make a histogram or maybe like the data. You don't have to put like word for word so that it's taking you way too long. Most of the questions are only like 30 seconds to a minute to answer them. So like once you answer it, start taking down those notes, the important parts, things that will help you study. That's what you're doing on this paper. And then I'll be checking it before you leave to make sure you're participating. The other thing is your study guide for the constructed response portion of your test. So you are taking the unit one test on Wednesday both parts of it there's a illuminate portion kind of like multiple choice but like there are fill in the blanks and drop down so i don't want to say multiple choice um but there's an illuminate portion that is worth a hundred assessment points it's like 10 questions and then this one mirrors the constructed response portion so on test day you'll have a part to complete on the computer a part to complete in a packet form and the packet form will be 50 assessment points. So combined, it's 150 assessment points. That far outweighs any of the quizzes, right? Quizzes are 20 points each. Um, still use them as like 10 points and stuff, but you should be this week pouring all your energy into studying for the unit one test. So this mirrors the constructed response portion, which is basically like a short answer test. Um, there's only three questions worth 50 points. So definitely don't just like not do those questions because then you're just taking a zero out of 50 points. This study guide, I will check tomorrow when I check the binder test. Okay. The other study guide that mirrors the 100 point portion of your test is in Schoology. Work on it tonight. Tomorrow you'll have time to work on it while I check binders and then I'll take questions like the last half of class, basically whenever I get done with the binder test. So that's why tomorrow when you walk in, your binder should be ready. This should be ready and to complete for me to check. Um, so that way you have time in class to work on that other study session and then ask questions. If it takes way too long to get through binder checks and you don't have as much time to ask me questions. So questions on what I just said. If you forget, I am recording right now. We're doing through the slides. So definitely listen um, in the slides. So I'm going to take away the code for a second, but we'll get to it later. In the slides, I have a lot of things basically explaining everything that's in Schoology and all that. Um, the list for what you need for the binder check tomorrow. But really, this is like your to-do list for this class to make sure you're the most successful. And it's an order of importance. So most important thing right now is making sure your binder is ready for tomorrow. If not, you need to go take home and take notes on your own paper to make sure it's ready for tomorrow. Um, then you need to do the constructive response practice test, so the packet that you picked up today. Um, then the multiple choice practice test, that's in Schoology, the puzzle piece. And then after that, other missing work you might have. So these two things will be like 150 password points because they mirror like the assessment. I want you to do these two things more than I want you to do your old work that's already in the team and done. All right. I mean, I still want you to do your missing work, but that's only after these things are done. And then this last thing is completely optional. So any questions about that? All right, and make these worth more points so that you can do that. So make sure that you do that. You ask questions on them. All right, so anyway, back to the Kahoot. Uh, I'm going to press start because I gave you a lot of time to enter. So you can wait going to. 
the top three people will get their choice of a prize. So the three prizes that I have are five assessment points, a homework pass, and a hand. So like first place will get first dibs, second place will get second dibs, and so on. All right, then I'm gonna press start now. So take notes as we go. All right, so we are reviewing for unit one, how many cherry trees had a height of exactly 70? How many had a height of exactly 70? Two, three, eight, or you can't tell based on the histogram alone. You get 10 seconds. Sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Okay, so the answer is that you can't tell based on the histogram alone. Only three people got that. All right, so the question was, how many had an exact height of 70? You can't tell from just the histogram alone. You can tell that there were, let's see, there's 70 up to like 75. So you can tell that there are eight data points between 70 and 75. So from 70.0 to like 74.9. All right, because as soon as it hits, um, 75, it goes in this histogram bar, right? So this one that my arrow is on is 70 through like 74.9. But I can't tell you how many of those are 70 exactly. Okay, you can just tell what interval it falls to. So questions on that? You would need like a dot plot or a data set to look at. Um, also, if you're ever asked to make a histogram, which it will on your constructive response test, if you took a look, um, what should always be on your y-axis for histogram? Do we know what the y-axis is? Okay, what's the y-axis? So now listen to the questions I'm asking. What's the y-axis on a graph? The y-axis is the vertical axis, y to the sky, right? X to the left. So this axis is the one I'm asking you. What should it always be on a histogram? Can we read the one that's on the screen? Frequency. I'm hearing you. Frequency is what it should say on the y axis. So if you don't know that, maybe write that down on your paper right now. I'll take care of having you figure out that. If you're making a histogram, the frequency should always be on your y axis. That tells me how often something occurred within that interval. So I have eight data points from the 70 to the 74.9. All right, so moving on. Make sure we take notes fast as we go. Be here to help you set. All right, on to the next. All right, so next one we have: What percent of DVDs cost more than twenty dollars? I'll do my best to make it bigger. That's as big as it goes. What percent of DVDs cost more than $20? 5, 25, 50, or 70? What percent of DVDs cost more than $20? I 
and we can answer. You take notes as we go. Okay, so majority got it right. That's a that's a better feeling than I was feeling before. So let's see. Um, what divides box plots into percent? Into easy percent. So quartiles. So remember, quartile one is like the edge of the box on the left side. Quartile two is the line that's in the middle of the box. What's the other name for quartile two? The median, good. And then quartile three is the right-hand edge of this box. So that splits my data into 25% here, 25% there, 25% there, and 25% there. So when the question said, what percent of DVDs cost more than $20? We'll find where it hits that $20 mark in here. So what percent is more than $20? Good. What percent is less than $20? Good. And then what percent is 14 to $20? 50% because I said 14 to 20. So that would be like the box itself, right? So those are things that you could be asked um, if it's asking you for a percentage of the box plot. Good there? Okay. So then on to the next. Okay. All right, how much does the middle 50% of DVDs cost? Same box plot as before. Middle 50% of the DVDs. Okay, so majority got it right again. I feel like this question was basically like, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. That was an accident. If you need to scoot the desk closer so it's not like so dangerous, um, then go for it. But um, what I was saying is this question is basically testing me on who is paying attention the last like minute of class. So like, like we just talked about the box itself is the middle 50% of your data, right? So you're looking for the left edge of the box to the right edge of the box. That's my 50% of my data. So it costs $14 to $20. Um, what would the IQR be of that box plot? Good. The IQR would be six. I know I didn't ask about it, but I'm telling you. Q3 minus Q1 is your formula for IQR. That's like the one thing that Desmos won't explicitly tell you, but it can tell you what your quartiles are, so. You have to know IQR is Q3 minus Q1. Good on that one? Okay, so on to the next. All right, so how many cars had 31 miles per gallon? How many cars had 31 miles per gallon? Okay, almost everyone got it right. 
So dot plots are arguably the easiest to read. All right, you can see all the data points, not like a histogram or a box plot where you only see certain parts. Um, so when it asks, how many cars had 31 miles per gallon? 31 is between 30 and 32, right? So there's six dots there. Questions on that? So yeah, dot plots are so easy that we probably won't have you make dot plots. Probably you need to know how to make a box plot and a histogram for sure. On to the next. Okay, which measure of center would we use for the data? Same dot plot as before. Which measure of center would we use for the data? I was taking notes, I put for the question, best measure of center. I would draw the dot plot roughly. And then I put what I think my answer is and why. Okay, so better majority of people got it right compared to my first hour, so that's good. First, you need to ask yourself, what are my options for measure of center? What are my options? Median and quartiles are not a measure of center. Mean. Mean and median are my only measures of center. The ones down here, standard deviation and IQR, are my measures of variability or spread. So really for this question, you only had two options. That made sense, it's mean or median, because these are variability down here. Um, and then look at the data. That's how you determine whether you want to use your mean or your median. What tells, What do you have to look at exactly? That would be for variability. If I'm deciding whether my mean or median is better, how do I know? If the data is symmetric, you use what? The mean if it's symmetric. Now, is this data symmetric? It's what we call skewed in what direction? Good, left skewed, because that's where the void is. All right, so most of the data is to the right but it's called left skewed. When your data is skewed, you wanna use the median and why you might ask. Well, my median will probably be somewhere over here where most of my data is, maybe a little bit more to the left, like this. Um, and if the data is symmetric, then the mean and median are basically the same, right? But because we have some potential outliers over here, that pulls the mean in that direction. So in this case, since it's pulling it to the left, my mean is actually going to probably be smaller than my median. So, and that's why we want to use the median over the mean. Questions on that? Okay. So there you go. When it's skewed, use the median. Okay. On to the next one. Which measure of variability would we use for the data? Same dot plot. Which measure of variability would we use for the data? And then take notes as we go. Yeah, that's your points for today. Take notes as we go, starting now. Okay, so um, 
again, this is kind of, well, I mean, I guess I didn't tell you which variability to use, but you definitely should not have picked red or blue. All right, because what are my only measures of variability on my answer options? Okay, good. So really your only options that made sense were yellow or green, because those are the only ones that measure spread. Now, any time that we determine that the median is better, like for example, this data we said is skewed, so we want to use the median for center. Um, anytime we choose the median for center, what do we choose for the spread? The IQR. For median. Okay, the way that I remember it is because you need the median in order to find the IQR. Like you can't figure out what Q3 and Q1 are until you know what the median is. So these are always going to be paired together median and IQR. It'll never be like median and standard deviation, for example. Um, so if it's skewed or not symmetric, use the median for center, IQR for variability, and then the opposite for the mean. Right? If it's symmetric, use the mean, and then use standard deviation. Questions on that? <laughs> Which distribution would have a smaller standard deviation? The green or the blue? Which distribution would have a smaller standard deviation? Notice you only have 20 seconds, so you don't have time to use Yeah, we're not going to, but we're going to. Smaller standard deviation. So one way to know for sure is to put everything in Desmos and see that that'll be more time consuming. And also this one only gave you 30 seconds to figure it out. Um, there is a way to tell by looking at it, at least roughly, which one will be smaller or higher. What does standard deviation tell us about data? How spread out it is. So in that case, if it wants to know which one has a smaller standard deviation, would that be more or less spread out? So we want to know which one is less spread out if we want the smaller standard deviation. So then between the two of them, which one looks more spread out or less spread out? So let me re-ask that for one minute. Which one looks less spread out, green or blue? Mm -hmm. All right, yes. So that's why this one has a smaller standard deviation compared to this one, which is higher because it's more spread out. All right, and notice they didn't even give you numbers. So you couldn't actually put this one in Desmos. You just have to look at it. This one's more clustered toward the center. This one's more spread out. Question? Okay. So smaller standard deviation is less spread out. Okay, which distribution would have a greater standard deviation? Two histograms, I'll try to make them bigger. But which one would have a greater standard deviation? Yeah. Which one? 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 All right, 
So this is a great, great test question. Um, because you can't know what the data points are. It's a histogram. So you have to tell visually which one's more or less correct. Um, so in that case, you guys all said the right one, which is true. How do you know? Um, Jasmine? There's less data toward the center. Now, why would that matter? Like, why does it matter? Because you're right, but why? Why do we care if the data is toward the center or not? Okay, more compact or not. Um, what else is toward the center of the? What other measurements for the center? The mean and the median too, but like, since these are both symmetric, we can expect the mean to be toward the middle and the median, but mean would be the better measure of spread. And look at where the rest of the data is compared to both of the means. This one's all centered around it. This one's all far away from it, right? So this one, the bimodal one, is more spread out, higher standard deviation than what shape is this one? Bell shape. <laughs> and it'll usually be that trend. Okay, so you guys know the answer. That's great. You need to also explain why. And that pretty much goes with like your first question on your constructor. So there you go. Questions on that? And this may or may not be the last, so let's see. Which, which measure of center and variability best represent this data? Which measure of center and variability best represent that? And then all of them are and throw the video lesson. Okay, so majority got it right, still some stragglers. So First of all, you never want to pair like median and standard deviation. They will never be paired together. Um, same with mean and IQR. If the mean is better, then we would go with standard deviation for spread. If the median is better, then we would go with the IQR. Now, figure out which mean or median. Look at the data. What do you check for when you look at the data? If it's symmetric or not, is it? Even if it was just roughly symmetric, we would still go with the mean over the median. So that's why the answer was mean and standard deviation. All right, let's do one more and this will decide the winners. I've been checking as we go. I don't think anyone lost points today, so that's good. Um, the median will be greater than the mean for the data below, true or false. The median will be greater than the mean for the data below. Another great test question. I will post the Kahoot in the slides in case you want to practice yourself. There's like 28 questions. We've only got through 10. So great other optional study tool.
All right, very 50-50. So the answer was false. The median is not greater than the mean. So tell me, is the data symmetric? No. No, it is skewed to the right. So this right skew. Um, that tells me that my median will be, and I could actually figure it out, but I'm gonna approximate it. My median is probably somewhere over here where the majority of my data is. But my mean is being pulled in whatever direction my outliers are, which are to the right. Do the numbers get bigger or smaller to the right? They get bigger. Oh, when you go to the right on the number line, the numbers get bigger, right? Yeah. So that'll pull the mean higher than where my median is. So my mean is greater. So the paper is yours to keep for studying. I already came around and checked. It didn't look like anyone was not taking notes. So that's good and all. Um, do you study, guys? Have them done tonight, honestly. So when you walk in tomorrow, you're ready to ask questions and to get your final question. Like that. Let's see who won. So, Kaden, do you want the five points, the um, candy, or the homework pass? Okay. Elijah, which Elijah is this, by the way? Okay. Um, do you want the five points, assessment points, um, or the candy? Okay. So then, Jasmine, you get the candy. 